What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're gonna be talking about the breaking news from Activision about PlayStation exclusivity, another surprise announcement from Treyarch even, as well as a little bit more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and be sure to check out our wonderful partner Manscaped, who recently released a variety of products with the Performance Package 4.0. You can clean your bombs on there like never before with the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker Trimmer for our nose and ears, the Crop Preserver Deodorant, and the Crop Reviver Toner. There's also some free gifts like the Magic Mat, the Manscaped Boxers, and the Luxury Travel Bag. Don't forget about the link down below in the description and use code TWITCH20 to save 20% off your order. Also, thank you to everybody out there for allowing me to hit 71,000 beautiful subscribers here in the channel. I am beyond humbled, honored, grateful. There aren't any words to describe how I'm feeling about that. But seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. Call of Duty also went ahead and announced while we were podcasting earlier that they're hosting the official Vanguard World premiere with Verzuzen Line. Never heard of them before. On November the 3rd. And everybody's invited. You can come through for celebrity gameplay tournaments, live music performances, and a stacked lineup full of surprises. We're not sure what that even is, but we'll keep you guys posted with whatever else gets announced about that later on this Wednesday. And Treyarch also confirmed earlier this afternoon that there's a triple double event live in Black Ops Cold War and Warzone right now. Take advantage of that while you guys can. Double XP, double weapon XP, and double battle pass tiers all across the board for every game mode, minus campaign, but you know what I mean. In terms of the breaking news though, here's where things get crazy. So right after we ended our podcast earlier, all of a sudden Charlie Intel quoted the following. An Activision source has confirmed there will be no PlayStation exclusive mode in Call of Duty Vanguard. And I'm like, hold on a second. Whoa, I mean, we're going to get into the specifics about what I think that means for the future. But earlier this afternoon, many hours ago, they had tweeted that the only exclusivity we know about so far for Vanguard is five tier skips with the Battle Pass bundle. So that's 25 total. We already had that offer in Cold War. Two custom loadout slots, which we also had in Cold War. Combat packs for each season for PlayStation Plus owners. We had that in Modern Warfare and Cold War. Monthly double XP events lasting 24 hours. Hours. Those usually begin on Thursdays, which are right before double XP weekend, stretching from Friday to Sunday, and then 25% weapon XP when partying up with friends. So these are features we already had in a little bit of Modern Warfare and all of Cold War. So I'm like, okay, they're keeping that deal from year to year, it seems, but how is there not going to be an exclusive mode? Not that I'm endorsing only having PS4 and PS5 getting access to a cool new mode for multiplayer zombies, but I'm a little surprised that... They're not going to go through with one this time around, especially when you have a lot of studios collaborating on Call of Duty Vanguard. Now, in one way, I could see this as being excited about getting less content because it's one less mode that we're going to get now. It's not like there is a mode that was planned for exclusivity that's now going to release for everybody. So there's just less content. But on the flip side, it's still good for the community in the sense that there won't be any division like we had with Survival or Onslaught where two platforms miss out on something for an entire year. I mean, looking back at how Call of Duty used to work, back in the day, you know, you would have a month gap for map packs from Xbox to PlayStation. Then it turned into a week for zombies in Black Ops 4. And now it's like, all right, everybody gets everything at the same time whenever something new comes out. But if there's an exclusive mode that comes out during the launch window, you have to wait a whole year before you can play that. So it's a bit of a controversial topic, but all in all, Onslaught does become available this Monday the 1st on Xbox and PC. And that could be a good round-based supplement in the meantime for those platforms, considering there's a number of maps and modes you could enjoy now with the Onslaught experience altogether. Lots of maps you can play through, get eight gold chalices on. There's also uh, the other LTMs they added throughout this past year, which are a ton of fun. It's a lot of content, but it's unclear if we're going to get those same Onslaught achievements we have on PlayStation also added to Xbox Live and then Battle.net. Maybe they'll do that, maybe they won't, but it's still a lot of content, right? And I consider it round-based on multiplayer maps. I know there's no mystery box or pack much machine, but you don't need either of those. It drops everything you need anyway, and instead of a round counter, it's just, you know, a couple of zombies that you kill each surge, or more than a couple, and then, boom, the surge counter goes up when the orb moves. Same thing, right? It's just a number. So altogether, Onslaught was definitely a huge step up compared to Survival, and it wasn't just a throwaway mode like Survival was. It was a mode that I continuously played time and time again, at least once a week, and especially every time they added new updates to it each season, whenever there's a new map or a new mode. I played it quite a bit. I definitely enjoyed it, especially containment, since very replayable for people that like close quarters gameplay and want to do some camel challenges, something along those lines. It was great, but I know Xbox PC didn't have it, but they will very soon. So I was assuming with Vanguard, they would have enough time to get another mode like that out, right? Something that is worth playing, but nothing that's too divisive. Not anything like round-based, and that was also a possibility, but here's a tin foil hat theory for you guys out there. This is not confirmed at all, just my theory. So remember that report a couple of months ago that said Monover 3 Remastered did not exist? Even though there's clear evidence, not only from gaming scoopers and even that big NVIDIA leak recently, there's also evidence in the Monover 2 Museum in the remastered version, that is, that there was 
was the Modern Warfare Remastered Trilogy planned? So, I believe they call it the collection. Same thing, you guys get what I mean. So clearly there were plans for one at one point. Maybe it got cancelled, maybe it was scrapped. I kind of figured maybe after the big Activision Blizzard lawsuit, maybe that somehow affected their contract with Sony to where they pulled out of having more exclusive offers like that going forward that may have impacted Modern Warfare 3 Remastered, they may have impacted an exclusive mode for Call of Duty going forward as well, and now they just limited it to the little bonuses that I mentioned earlier that Charlie Intel confirmed. Maybe that's what happened. So the contract really isn't what it used to be anymore from our understanding today. We could be mistaken on that, but at this point, I guess you could say, what is really the point of the contract? Because would somebody buy a PlayStation just for those bonuses I listed earlier with the XP and you know the extra loadouts and the Battle Pass bundles? Probably not, but I could have maybe saw somebody say, okay, there's a PS4 or PS5 on sale somewhere, or I can buy a used one just to play Survival or Onslaught. I definitely would have for Onslaught, because Onslaught's a ton of fun. It's a lot of extra content per season, at least in my opinion. You can disagree with that in the comments, of course. But at this point, it's like, why would you really want to get a PlayStation when I think realistically the best place to play Call of Duty is PC because of performance? I used to say before that the best place to play was PlayStation just because of the content, if you cared about that. That's just the way I look at it. But I did think it was possible the following things could have happened. Maybe we get an announcement after Vanguard's launch about the PlayStation exclusive mode. Maybe it wasn't ready for launch for whatever reason, and maybe they're saving it for a Season 1 add-on or something, and then boom, Sony can go ahead and announce it. There was also another theory that I saw brought up by Perka on Twitter, which stated that last year, Survival had released on Xbox and PC after a whole year before the official marketing for Onslaught started. I think it was like the first week of October when Survival finally came out on other platforms, and then it was October 23rd when you finally saw the Onslaught marketing for PlayStation. So maybe I was thinking, all right, after this Monday, once Onslaught comes out on other platforms, then at some point right after that, we'll get some marketing for the Vanguard mode. That was a good theory. It was plausible for sure. And I think the very last option could have been maybe the mode was super controversial to the point where they were saving the PR for next week. Maybe it would have been round based and they said, you know what, let's not go through with that. Maybe that was scrapped completely or it could have been possible. Like I said earlier, they save the controversial announcement for later in the year. I mean, anything could have been possible with that. And I will say it's unclear if this contract between Sony and Activision will now impact what content gets dropped for Modern Warfare 2 next year and then Treyarch's next game after that in 2023. I don't think if this contract didn't exist, Onslaught would have received any more updates than it already did. I mean, maybe it could have, but I'm kind of unclear as to what else could have been added to Onslaught when Cold War came out. What else could they have added to it? Everything's pretty much in the mode when it comes to loot drops, spawn rates, everything's been fixed. They significantly fixed the mode after a couple of months compared to Survival and Modern Warfare, which never got fixed at all. And I'm also like, wait, I know Vanguard started development a good year and a half ago. It hasn't been, you know, a five-year development cycle, so I know they had to put together what they could in a short amount of time. Treyarch got the clutch zombies for them, and now they're going to clutch something else we're going to talk about in a minute. But I'm like, damn, all these studios collaborating and they couldn't get another mode done. Maybe they're out of ideas, maybe they're out of time, maybe the contract just fell through completely and they said there's no need for another mode. I'm wondering what happened there because you would have thought something could have dropped this year, right? Even like a headquarters mode like we had in World War II. That would have been hilarious if it was exclusive because it's obviously unfair for Xbox and PC. But that could have even been something that could have been limited to PlayStation for a while. That would have been controversial as well, though. Now, the surprise announcement that nobody could have expected today from Treyarch is that they're going to be helping with CD this year with Vanguard multiplayer. I had no idea whatsoever that they were going to go beyond Vanguard Zombies and even help out with multiplayer. They're playing a large role in this game's development. I will tell you that much. So, as they wrote, we're collaborating with our partners to bring competitive modes, ranked skill divisions, visible skill ratings, and new competitive rewards to Vanguard ranked play in 2022. More details to come. Call of Duty also wrote, such Hammer Games and Treyarch look forward to bringing a new level of ranked play support to Vanguard in 2022 in collaboration with the COD League. More details will be shared at a later date and they kind of gave us a hint in yesterday's massive blog post about Vanguard that there would be a big competitive aspect of the multiplayer pretty soon after launch but not too far so I guess you can guess uh, at some point right after New Year's while season one is still active that's what we could assume right now about the competitive side of things usually we end up getting competitive updates to Call of Duty multiplayers at around that time anyway late January early February hopefully sooner but I'm a little surprised about that Treyarch's helping out with that as well look back to what the press reported many years ago 
ago. I mean, Sledgehammer was working on COD 2020. That didn't work out. Treyarch had to step in, take over that project, turn it into Cold War with not much time to do that. And they still clutched what I consider a very solid product, a very polished game, which is Black Ops Cold War. You can disagree with that all you want. I just think there's a lot of content in multiplayer and zombies that I consistently play every day. And again, call me a shill. Modern Warfare wasn't my cup of tea, but Cold War was. I mean, it's subjective, of course, right? So... Then after that, after clutching Cold War together, despite having a pretty rough cycle with Black Ops 4 with the bugs and then having to step away from Black Ops 4's post-launch cycle midway through, then they're also working on Vanguard Zombies and now CDL. So that's going to be insane. Treyarch is seriously hard at work with the Call of Duty franchise and we have to give them props where props are due. I mean, seriously, even if you don't like Treyarch as much as other development studios, you can't deny they've had to clutch together some pretty difficult projects with some very tight schedules behind them. So, massive round of applause to Treyarch for pulling through yet again for Sledgehammer here with Call of Duty Vanguard. I also want to remind you that I have a couple of upcoming streams that you guys are probably going to be interested in. First off, this Sunday is Halloween. I do want to do a bit of a fun stream where I'm in costume, play some Cold War with you guys together, even some Warzone. I think it'll be fun. I haven't dressed up in costume for many years, so I think this year might be the time to do it, considering we have the awesome haunting event, which is coming to an end soon. Might do that. I'll let you guys know what I end up planning and doing. And we then have November the second a pretty big day to be honest we have two things first the hammer and sickle is releasing in cold war one of the final weapons to ever be added in this game at least to our understanding right now and a couple of hours after that we have the activision investors call at about 3 30 p.m central 4 30 eastern i'll be live throughout the entire day with everything that gets announced so i'm looking forward to it could get some big announcements about the future of the call of duty franchise as we know it also the good news about how well cold war performed in terms of sales and modern warfare is the best-selling game of 2019 cold war was for 2020 and 2021 one. So I'm curious how Activision responds to that with their upcoming investors call. And then about a day after that or so, we'll be doing a full campaign walkthrough for Call of Duty Vanguard. Very excited about that. Hope to see you guys there in those live streams. I also wanted to bring up very quickly paid content. A bit of a controversial topic I've been seeing all over Twitter and Reddit. If you pay for a season pass, would content be any different? Certainly not. I mean, if Treyarch had the same amount of time to make the multiplayer maps and the zombie maps for Cold War and the DLC season, then what would paying for those maps have changed? Literally nothing at all. If anything, it would divide the community more, you know, limit the player base so that only players that bought the map packs get access to the playlist. That's not good. We had that problem for many years and they've gotten rid of that. I mean, on top of the fact that having to pay an extra 50, 60 bucks for maps isn't exactly something everybody could afford right now considering the pandemic. And I think there's no evidence whatsoever to support that paying for maps would increase quality. What would that even change? You know, would that increase the QA testing? You know, would that have more devs, you know, put more time into that content? It certainly would not. I just think the style of content and the way DLC works has changed over the years. And people think paying for the content would have changed anything. It certainly wouldn't have. If you bought a Black Ops Pass for Cold War to get multiplayer and zombies maps, Okay, it would have been the same apps anyway. Nothing would have changed. People just would have complained even more online that they paid for something that they're not enjoying. We've had like 25 or so multiplayer maps. We've had so many zombies updates. I mean, so much content that previous CODs just didn't have. But, I mean, to each their own, right? More power to you if you don't like Black Ops Cold War. I also want to bring up the fact that we do have many mystery downloads for Black Ops Cold War 2 to be exact. Update 1.25 and update 1.26. 1.25 was already installed a couple of days ago. It was worth a couple of gigabytes. We don't know what exactly that was even for. Theories go around that it was maybe Onslaught for Xbox and PC. And I'm like, sure, but why did we install that on PlayStation? What would have been the point? Not sure what that was even for. Another update also popped up in the database a few days ago. And that one's supposed to be installed in the next few days. So... It's not going to be for the Hammer and Sickle. That's already in the game's files, according to 3D artists. So it's got to be just a Season 6 outro cutscene. And if the update is huge, maybe even some other rumored remastered multiplayer maps that haven't been added to the multiplayer yet. I think it's certainly plausible to think that. Could even be a situation where we install a new title update for Cold War. And it has a bunch of content in there, right? More maps, more weapons. And they end up saving that content for random months 2022. Like we have in Modern Warfare last year where all of a sudden we had a title update that we installed and there were just maps and weapons sitting there in the game's files for months before we can actually use them. Might be like that with Cold War. We get some sporadic updates added to the game even when Vanguard's already in its prime cycle. I will be making a separate video probably this weekend talking about other options in terms of how round base could work in Vanguard Zombies 
teams, but as of right now, there's no evidence to support their round base will be in Vanguard whatsoever. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comments section. What are your thoughts on the breaking news from Activision about PlayStation exclusivity? How are you feeling about the surprise announcement? The trailer really isn't going anywhere this year in terms of zombies or even multiplayer now. They'll be handling the competitive side of things. We already have World at War Remastered multiplayer maps coming to Vanguard, which I'm happy about. So, Treyarch's presence will definitely be felt all throughout Vanguard's life cycle. I can tell you that much. But let me know what you're thinking down below. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everyone.